Hi everyone, welcome back. Uh, I'm so excited today to get back to my audience on YouTube. Um, before I get into the lesson, please let me remind you about my website. If you have a chance, just uh, um, drop by and visit my website at mymathteaching.ca mymathteaching.ca. So that is my website. And um, if you would like to sign up to my full courses online, um, this is another website here, mathcourses-online.digibone.com. So please write it down if you would like to visit my website. Anyway, um, I have published my first introduction to calculus course online uh, two months ago, and my second introduction to calculus course has uh, been published on um, February 17. So today we'll get into the first unit and the first lesson of Math 12, um, which is pre-calculus Math 12. And this course is an equivalent of Algebra 2 um, in USA and uh, advanced function for the Toronto students. Um, I am creating this course online based on the BC curriculum, British Columbia curriculum in Canada. However, we only have one universal of math language. So if you are at the right level, you are in Math 12, um, whether it's whatever it is, the principle of Math 12, foundation of Math 12, whatever you want to call it, on the material here for all students across the global. You might see maybe one, one or two section is not in your curriculum um, because the difference between the teacher teaching you and a little bit slightly different in the region. However, the basic principle, the core uh, academic concepts um, are just the same. And if you find something new, you can learn that even though better because you can cover a lot of topics in math and you can learn from a different um, perspective, um, collect uh, the lesson from here and another lesson. And I know that you have the whole online education, uh, free education channel on YouTube. Um, which is we are the course creator and on the professors on YouTube try to help you out. However, if you want to have a real connection and the continuous uh, spectrum of the my math core concepts, you can get into my website and sign up for it. Um, it's affordable, it's cheap, it's affordable. Uh, compare with the amount I put in for all of my effort. There's nothing uh, to compare. But anyway, let me get into the lesson. Um, so today I will talk about the um, transformation of the functions. And before I get into the real topic of the first lesson in unit one chapter of functions, transformation, ties of function and transformation and characteristic of it. Um, let me give you a little warm up in this lesson as well, a little warm up exercise to remind you about what you have learned in Math 10, Math 11. So in Math 10, you already learned what is a function. And in Math 11, you have learn about the quadratic function um, beside the linear function, which is the first function we learn in math nine and math 10. So um, let, let's talk about what is the function first. Anything in life, we know that we can 
related to at least two things in life. And uh, we call it relations. So the function must be a relation, but a relation might not be a function. And let's say a little example is to real life problem. For example, if I am performing the function of teachers, but I go to the classroom and I did not do anything, that is not a function. Another thing, let's say you have a vendor machine to collect the um, cash and customer input the number of coins they can get a Coke, a soda, or a bag of chips into the machine from the machine. But is this a broken machine? It, it uh, mess up the program that the student, um, the people put in their money, but they didn't get the, the reason they wanted. So that's not a function. In mathematics, the function is the relation between the two things. Um, and it has a certain condition to recognize whether it is a function or not. Because if you draw a diagram or a graph on the x and y coordinates, um, but um, it might not be a function. And it's hard to recognize in the math um, by mathematics. Um, in the real life, if I'm not performing my function as a teacher, then you recognize it, you realize it. But in mathematics, we need a certain condition to identify whether or not a relation is a function. So how do we identify a relation as a function? Um, this is just the review for math 10 you have learned. We can recognize the function by uh, looking at the graph and using the vertical line test are looking at their coordinates and check it out whether or not it's a function. So I'm not going to try to review everything for you in detail as you have learned in Math 10. I just want to go over it quickly so that we can get right into the lesson of Math 12. Um, just a little bit review and warm up of it. So if you have a function on the graph, um, so let's say I draw a function, any function like that, then this is the function I call an f of x function. And this is one way you can recognize the function. Another way, if you don't have a graph and you just have a couple of coordinates, um, Let's say you have a coordinate, a set of coordinate, uh, one, two, um, three minus four, uh, five, six. And then you might have another set of coordinate, let's say two minus four and two, seven and uh, minus three, seven. So let's say you have a set of coordinates like this and you have a graph like that. Um, another thing you can identify the function based on the mapping and all of this you have learned from the math 10 already. So just a little bit of review for you. So how do we identify the function? Through all of this thing. OK, 
Okay, so let me review for you, right? Um, so if you have any graph like this, the easy way to identify the function is using the vertical line test. So for example, um, I want to save this stuff for later on I'm using. So I just get here. Um, so this function, right? So let's say, how do I identify the function here if I use a vertical line test? So let's say if I draw a vertical line test like this, And I can draw as many as like one or just one or two of them or one of them, right? So vert vertical light test will tell you if this is the fx function and this is the point intersect of the vertical light test and the function, right? So at this point, you know the y coordinate of this one, let's say this is three and the x coordinate of this one, let's say one here, and let's say this is uh, two, and for the second light test, let's say this is the point, and the y coordinate of this one is four, and the x coordinate of this one is two. So what is a vertical light test tell you? The vertical line test say that if this line, let's talk about the first line here, right? Intersect the function at the point four and two. So two for x and four for y. And intersect another function, uh, uh, the function at another point and this point is three and what, uh, sorry, one and three, one for X and three for Y. So obviously you will see that the X here have, we call a domain and the Y here we call a range. So the set of X is the domain and the set of Y is the range and one x here give one y here. One x here give a different y here. So none of these x have the same coordinate. And it's true because the, the, the shape of the function go this way. So anytime you draw a vertical line test, let's say you draw, you're talking about this line. So then here, another coordinate here. And obviously this coordinate lower than this one, and therefore this coordinate associated with one x here, which is minus uh, one, and one y here below the number three a little bit. So anytime you draw a vertical line test, none of this coordinate have the same x. None of this coordinate have the same, the same x, regardless, um, where they are, they they have they they are slightly different in terms of this x coordinate. Now, at some level, let's say if I make this higher a little bit, they might have the same y coordinate right here at three at three for these two coordinate, but the x coordinate here is. Uh, maybe minus 0 0.5 and the x coordinate here is minus one. So at some level, they might have the same y coordinate, right? But they don't have the same x coordinate. So that's the vertical line test tell you. So you might not see it very well. Um, let me draw another graph and show you. So let's say if you have a parabola graph, let's say this one, and if you draw a vertical line test. So my vertical line test here, he uh, intersect the function at this point at very low value of y 
and the x value is one. If I draw another vertical line test, then at this point, I have another y coordinate here. Let's say this is two and this is two for x. So because the shape of this function like this, so regardless how many vertical line tests you draw, you see that this obviously only this function has a set of a domain, which is the set up on the x value. And on the x value here are different. Z minus one, Z zero, Z one, Z two, and the Z three. So they all have a different x. At the same level here and here, because they are uh, symmetry for the parabola is symmetry. So it might have the same y, but it never have the same x. Z minus one, this is three, obviously, right? So even though their y is the same, but their x are not the same, we define this is the function. We say, yes, this function, quadratic function is a function because when we draw the vertical line test, we have on the different x. So at at the point where the vertical line test intersect the function, this point, we have an x as three. At the point here, we have an x uh, as minus one, this is minus two, let's say. So this is the different value as well. So you can see that as long as you draw the vertical line test, they all have to have a different x coordinate. And the x coordinate is on the way on the value, including the rational value or, of, or the whole integer value along the x axis here, because this function keep going like this. And so if you draw a vertical line test, then the x here, and if it extend this way, you draw a vertical line test is on the, the other side. None of the value of the domain have to be the same. And that's how we recognize the function. Now, in which case they have the same x. Let's, let's look at that um, graph, if they have the same x. So if the same parabola, but let's say if I change the parabola, it go this way. And this is also a function. Let's call this a g of x function. If I draw a vertical line test, what happened? Let's say this intersect of the point here have a different y, one up and one down, z y one, z y two. But what about their x? The x value here is exactly the same. Let's say this is the line x equal three. So the x value here is three. And you can see in this, in this graph, the function intersect the vertical line test at two part. They have a different y coordinate, but they have the same x coordinate. So in this way, we recognize by using the graph in mathematics, we say, no, this is not a function. Not a function. Because we have the same x value given different value of y. And in another case, you might have the same x value give the same y. Either of them are not acceptable. So to recognize the function, the easiest way for you is look at the domain, the set of x. Now the y doesn't matter, the y coordinate doesn't matter. You, you might have the same y or you might have different y, but as long as not the same x produce the different y or produce the same y. And, and, and because I don't want to get into the explaining the function, which you have learned in math 12. 
if you look at the coin you input in the machine, you can see any time you input $2 in the coin, it has to give you a bag of chip. If you input the same $2, but give you a cup, whereas the price of the cup is only $1, then that's why the function doesn't work. So that is related is like along the line of that idea. You cannot input the same $2 and give you the same bag of chip, which it costs $5, or the Coke, which is only $1, when you input the same amount of value. And that's why we distinguish on the graph, the function perform when it is a function, when you look at the, the domain value, none of them are the same. Each x only give one y, or each x can give two different y's or three different y, but we cannot have the same x giving another y or the same y. And as the easy example I should tell you, if you input $2 in the machine, and you get a bag of chip cost you $5. Or you input the same $2, give you a bag of chip. Let's say it's the same value. Let's say the bag of chip is $2. So you input $2 and you expect to get um, the bag of chip $2, that's fine. But then the machine take the same value of input, which is $2 and give you um, a chocolate bar, which it costs you $3. So it's the same amount of input cannot give you the same or different amount of output. So that's the symbol, not just that. And, and these explanation will demonstrate it on the rough on in math. And therefore, we learn to recognize it easily. Let's say we cannot have the same x to get the same y or different y. So that is about the function. Now, there are more into that. For example, the one-on-one -on -one function and the inverse function. So the one-to-one -one function mean for any x, get different any y. And if it is a one-to-one -one function, then it can have an inverse. If it's not a one-to-one -one function, you cannot have an inverse. Okay, so now let's get back to our coordinate. So now from the graph like this, you will check if they don't show you the graph. If the question on your exam not showing you the graph. But as you recognize the function based on the set of coordinates, then again, easy. All what we do is look at the x coordinate and don't worry about the y, right? Look at the x coordinate. Now, if, if they are not the same, here is number one for x, here is number three for x, here number five for x doesn't matter what the y is, you know this is yes, it's a function because none of this input value are the same. Now let's check the second set here. You have an x here is two. You also have an x here too. Now, even though this coordinate two, so the x domain is two, give you the range of y is minus four. The x domain two give you a different y is seven. Even though they give a different y, it doesn't mean it's a function because as I said, you cannot say I input $2 in here in the machine and I got minus four. And then I also input the same amount $2. I get a, a seven, I gain a $7. So that is doesn't work that way. So. If you check from here up to here, you already know the answer will be, no, it's not a function. It's not a function. So that's how you recognize the function. 
based on the vertical light test and based on the coolness. Now, let me go to the map here. How do I recognize from the mapping process? So let's say I have the first circle, I call it input. And the second circle, I call it output. And let's say from the input, I have number one, two, three, four. And from the output, I have A, B, C, D. So I check, I say, okay, if I put $1 in the machine, my output is letter A. But also, if I put the same $1 in the machine, I got another letter B output. So as you look from the map here, the same input give you a different output, A and B. So only check from the first line, the first arrow, you on the first input you already see it not a function. Even though the two give you the B, the three give you C, the four give you D, yes, all of this is okay. But because this one, one member in your domain is not okay, so you cannot say the function. So for mapping here, you say no, this is not the function. This is not. So in this warm up exercise, it's just the review for Mark 10. You have learned about how we identify the function graphically and on the coordinates and from the set of coordinates and from the, the uh, mapping diagrams. Now, let me go to another diagram and show you. So this is just the first lesson which are talking about um, many different functions and how it, how it works. Uh, before we learn about function, first thing we need to know in mathematics is whether or not it is a function for us to do something else. If right at the start it's not function, you don't bother to sketch it, you don't bother to uh, dry it down or, you know, uh, doing something else about that, right? Because it's not a function. So, um, so let's say, so I'm finished about mapping diagram and thing. Okay, so now what else should I explain to you in this thing? So the next thing I'm going to give it to you in this lesson is about the transformation of the function. So the lesson is, the name of this lesson is the transformation and their function and characteristic. So when you're talking about the function, what is the things you should pay attention to? Recognize, identify the function, that's the first step. And through all of this, I just show you, right? Second thing, we're talking about the domain and the range. So let me explain to you what is the domain and what is the range of a function. So let's say, um, let's say if I draw the function, let me, sketch this function, okay? And I call this function, um, I think the blue color doesn't work very well on the record. Okay, so let's say this is the function f of x. So what you should pay attention when you have a function, the wrap of the function on the X and Y coordinate. What you should pay attention is the characteristic of a function. So what is a characteristic of a function? So I'm talking about characteristic, right? Characteristic. Now, characteristic of function is the domain and the range. 
So these are the first two things you look at it. And then you're talking about X intercept, which is where the function intercept the X axis or the Y axis. So pay attention to this point. And this point we call a base point, which is the point um, from the shape of the function, right? So based on this base point, you can produce the shape of the function. And X intercept, right? Y intercept, Y intercept, this is X intercept. That's other thing you pay attention. What is the domain of this function? Now, a lot of students still not recognize what we're talking about the domain. What is the domain? This is the language of math, right? Okay. So the domain is the set of X value of the function. Keep in mind that your function keep going, right? Because we don't have enough room in this board to draw it. So if the arrow of the function go up like this, it means it keep going up forever. It could be go up to infinity, past the infinity of Y number, right? So therefore you have an arrow. And this arrow, you also pay attention into it, you call an end point, right? So the end point. Now, obviously, um, Hmm. Okay, in this function, you don't have an end point actually, um, because this arrow keep going, right? So, but in some function, you might have an end point. For example, um, the radical function, right? So it stop right here. So this point, we call an end point. And sometimes it might not start at zero, but it start from here. So you might have, this is the end point. So in some function, we have an end point. Um, this is the polynomial function. It keep going, but we also might relate it a little bit. We call this, look at the end point, it's keep going up on the right, and the end point here is keep going down. So the end behavior, and we call that is the end behavior of the function. End behavior of the function, right? Whether it's keep going down negative direction or it keep going up positive direction. So we, we, we base on that and we say, this is the end behavior of the function. And sometimes the end behavior function not keep going, it stop right here. And we know the value here, right? Um, okay. So what is the domain? I want to explain the domain because a lot of students still don't know what's domain. Remember I just say domain is a set of X value, right? So when the function like that, when you want to find the domain of this, you identify domain. What is the domain of this function? Um, let's say this value here is minus three, and here is two, and here is uh, six. Now, it doesn't mean that this function stop at x equal six or x equal minus three, obviously, right? It's just the intercept of x. So this function keep going this way, right? keep going and it keep going that way and it go forever so therefore if it go up this way on the way from the y value is negative on the way up to the y value is positive um sorry i mess up that is i'm talking about the y so let's just talk about the x so when you talk about domain, forget about the Y, right? Let's talk about the domain of X. Now, as the Y keep going, the X also keep going as well, right? So if you pick the point here, the X right here, you pick the point here, the X right here, pick the point here, the X right here. Now, if you pick the point up here, the X also extend this way, right? 
or if I extend the function down this way and you pick the point here, the act also extend this way to negative infinity both sides, right? So you can the domain of this is negative infinity to positive infinity. That is the domain of this function. So what is the range of this function? And the range of this function is exactly the same because if you're looking at the y value, right? If you pick the point here, the y here. Pick the point down here, the y is low, below negative level. Pick the point here, the y down here this way. So therefore, and the function keep going. So by looking at the direction of the behavior of the function, we know the range here is also negative infinity and positive infinity. So that is the about the domain and the range of this function. Now, all the characteristics such as x intercept, y intercept, you should know. It's very easy, so I'm not mentioned about that. So this is how we recognize the domain value. Now, let me give you another example. Let's say you have um, um, Let's say you have a linear function this way and this way, and then you have a parabola this way. Okay. So let's say you have a function, weird function like that. I call it function h of x. So let's talk here about the domain of this value. So domain of this function. Now this line keep going down this way. So the domain keep expanding to the negative direction, right? Of x value, right? So if, if you extend this value, so obviously it come from the negative infinity for this domain, right? Let's talk about the, the thing here. This domain is only as this up to this level for x, um, actually, this level for x, right? But then it go back this way. So it go back to negative infinity. But it stopped right here. It not, it go to the right side, it doesn't have a domain, right? If it continue from this point forward, let's say this point is 10, x equal 10. Okay, this is 5, and this is 10. So then we can say that this domain is from negative infinity this way, right? Up to 10 value. That's the domain of this function. Because up to 10 is stop. You don't see the x value over this way anymore, but it go back this way, right? So you say the domain here is from minus infinity this way, keep going this way. So the x is keep going negative infinity, right? Keep going. So the domain stack from negative infinity from this side up to 10, because up to 10 is the last value of this domain, the x value of this function, right? It's not, it's not even the as this after that. But let's analyze about whether or not this trap. So let's say if they ask for you, the question asks you, what is the domain of this graph? This is your answer. From negative infinity to 10 for x, right? What about the range? What about the range of this weird function, the weird graph? We're not talking about function because we haven't identified a function or not. Um, what about the range of this graph? The range of this graph, because the psi is keep going this way, so the y will be negative infinity, right? Obviously, because it's keep going. But it go this way, and it keep going this way, right? And we don't know what is the continuum of this graph, actually, because we don't know. Um, it keep go this way. 
So we might pick the y function here and say, okay, at this maximum level, the y of this graph is up to here is let's say um, value of eight. Then you can say minus the infinity to maximum level of this graph, right? Maximum level here is a. Now, whether or not this graph is a function, from here to here to this stage, right? If you draw a very polite test, they all have a different act. X1, X2, X3. Uh, if back in this way, maybe X, uh, let's say this is X1 start from here, right? X2, X3, and then X, X5, X6, X7, whatever, right? Uh, the exit of it. So they are different X. There are no, none of them here have the same X. So from the function from the left side to up to at this point, then you can say this path is yes, this is a function. But what about the circle and go like this? If you draw a vertical like test, what happened? At this point, if this is five, let's say this is six, or uh, let's say this is seven, then as x equals seven, at x equals seven, right? This circle shape here, not circle on the curve shape here, is not a function. So yes, it starts, it is a function, but only up to x equals seven, um, but only up to x less than seven, right? Then it's the function. And long at x equals seven and more, first of all, it doesn't exist more than say, up more than 10. And at x equals seven is not a function because it has the same input of number seven to get a different output of y, h, and zero, right? Zero here for y and a here for y. So therefore, this graph only exists as a function from here to here. And from here to here is not a function. So that's how you identify and analyze the graph mathematically. Now, in the next um, idea, so I'm talking about characteristic of it, domain and range. So now let's talk about um, the last thing we talk about in this video is about the ties of transformation. And the ties of transformation is um, have variety topic as well. And the function, the tie of function. So what tie of function we have? So far, we know about the function is um, linear, right? Linear is a straight line. Another function is quadratic, is a parabola, right? That is a parabola graph, but this is a quadratic function. Now, the quadratic function have the basic form is y equal x squared, right? So you look at the power here is degree two. Any function have a degree two is a quadratic function. Um, another thing is the cubic function. So the cubic function like look like the shape I just draw, it intercept the wrap at three root. And so this function is a cubic function with the degree three. Now we don't know the next could be 3x minus 10, whatever it is. We don't know, right? Um, we don't know. So this is this part we just leave it, but you know it keep going, right? But the highest degree is x to power three because it has a three root like that, right? So this is the we call this is the polynomial function. 
And another function, let's say the shape, this you call a rational function. So there's a many type of function. And another function, which is we call it inverse function. So for example, you see the inverse function of the trick uh, y equals sine x, right? So this is y equals sine minus x, something like that. So this is a lot of different type of the function, except the linear function, we all learn about that. So in math nine, you learn about linear function. In math 10, you learn about the a quadratic function and uh, it progressed through math 11 as well and math 12 now. So that is the type of function. And we also know that it, the type of function is whether or not it's the one-to-one -one function. I just mentioned it, right? Um, now let's talk about the types of transformation. So what is the type of transformation? If you have a function, Let's say the parabola function, right? Say a parabola function. You can move this parabola to the right, right? Let's say from here to here zero, and this is three unit. So this parabola move to the right. You also can move this parabola to the left as well, the same parabola, but it moved to the left. And this we call a translation. When the function move, it doesn't change anything. It's the same function, but it move left, move right, or the same function, the same parabola here, but it move up, right? Uh, it also can be invert this way and then move down this way as well, right? Or it's the same shape, it's not inverse, but it move down this way. So on of the sheep, as long as the function is the same, it's not changing, it, the, the degree of opening the same, right? Um, it opening upward or opening downward this way, or uh, move left, move right, right? We call all of this is translation. Translation, it means translate. So I'm transfer my body, myself from here to here one big step. Or uh, I move my body to the right, right? Then that we call the shift are the translation, left, right, up or down. As long as you get into another type of function, it might be more difficult, let's say, and it's more difficult to identify, right? The shape is easy. You just look at the coordinate and you know how many units it move to the right, how many units it move up, how many units it move down, right? The shape is the easy one of translation. What about the, um, so we're talking about the characteristic of function, we're talking about translation now, right? The, the first type translation is translation, translation, right? And you have it on my note, like ship up or down, left or right. Second, we call it a vertical stretch, vertical stretch. And what is the vertical stretch? Let me draw a shape like this. Let's say I have a parabola. It looks skinny, it looks thin like this, right? But then I try to, let's say if I pick the point here as the Y coordinate, right? I pick the point here, right? But I stretch the point, so I leave the axis the same. Let's say the axis is one and the point here is two for y. But I'm going to stretch it. So instead of keep the same act as one, I'm going to cut the act here as um, 0 0.5, right? So I say, instead of keep the act as one, I'm going to 
cut, I'm going to divide the x coordinate here by half. So I say, if my x is 0 0.5, but my y is still 2, so then I create another graph look like something like this. Right? And even though if I make it more opening, let's say if I have the x is 2 here. The x is 2 here, let's say uh, this y here, I think that I'm not doing a good job here. So let me try to demonstrate it again for you to see. So let's say I have a skinny parabola. Um, But then I will draw this parabola in more opening on wider. So it look like something like this, right? It, it look wider. So as long as I stretch horizontally, I stretch the, the X. So let's say the X here is one. At the x is one, it meet the point two for the first wrap. But the same y, but the x is stretching instead of one, it stretched to two. So now at the x is two, the y is two. So I stretch the x, right, coordinate. So instead of the x is one, I stretch to two and I have the same y like that. So that will get, create a new wrap, which is I extend this x is double, right? One times two is two. So I double the x. And this I call the um, horizontal stretch. Horizontal stretch. Horizontal stretch. Um, Now, we also have a um, vertical stretch. Okay, so what is a vertical stretch? So let's say I'm going to keep the x the same at 1, but the y here, I will chain it. I will make it three high big longer for the y. So instead of at two, the y here will be two, four, six. So let's say at one, I have the point of y is, so x keep the same, right, as one, but the y I stretch, it becomes six. So now I'm going to create a new graph because at zero point, x and y always the same, right? So now let's look at the graph, how it look like. So it's skinnier when I stretch the Y, right? Obviously, when I stretch the Y, the wrap looks skinnier. So this I call a vertical stretch. Vertical stretch. And there are another type of transformation, right? So these are the vertical stretch, horizontal stretch. So if we've stretched the Y, we know the wrap look taller and skinnier. If we stretch the X, we know the wrap look wider, right? Okay. Now, what is another type of transformation we will learn in this unit? We will talk about the reflection. So let's say if I have um, the function look like this. Um, let's use the same parabola for you to see, right? So let's say if I have a parabola and I'm talking about reflection over the axis. So if I pick the point here, it will reflect like the axis is a mirror line, right? 
meter line. And let's say at this here as one, so then down here is minus one. So this part reflect over the x axis. If I pick the point here, it reflect over the x axis. I pick the point here, it reflect over the x axis with the same distance from here to here, right? This distance is the same. So now I will, and let's say if I in I'm inverse it upside down as well, right? So this is combined two piece of transformation. One is um, inverse, right? Uh, opening inside upward, it opening downward. Another one is the trans, the reflection, right? over the axis, reflection over the axis. So if I want this trap reflect, now for the parabola, obviously it's easy to talking about, to see it when it inverse like this, right? And reflection over the axis. Let me show you another function, which is easy to look when we're talking about reflection over the y axis. So let's say if I have this graph and let's say um, talk about the radical function. Okay, so this is radical function. And if I re reflect it over the y axis, so this point here, we reflect over here, right? The same distance. So this point becomes this point. This point here, reflect over here, become this point. So now, by reflection over the y axis, I create another wrap, look like that, but it reflects over the y axis. So this is reflect reflection over the y axis. So this is the first lesson in transformation. I, I just want to give you a whole general idea and be familiar with the terms we're talking about. Well, we're talking about the type of transformation is a, a translation or reflection. Um, we're talking about the stretching the y value and stretching the x value. So for the stretching, we kind of enlarge or compress the function, right? So we can enlarge or compress the function by stretching it y axis or it x axis. And for that, we talk about the multiply the fact the coordinate. So instead of the coordinate y is one, now it become, if you want to stretch it two times, you multiply with two. If you want to stretch it three times, you multiply with three. So the coordinate y is one become three. So that is a stretching. And when you're stretching, you create a different shape of the function. It might look skinny or taller, like I just demonstrated to you, right? So I just, in this lesson, I just want to, to introduce to you the thing about we should pay attention to function. We should know the x intercept, y intercept. We should know the end behavior and the domain and the range and the, um, the tie of transformation. Now I say this bar here because when I get this into the notation of the function, right? we will talk about the notation of the function and how do we sketch them, we translate them um, accurately scale on the graph, right? But this is the first um, lesson. So I just want to introduce to you on different types of transformation. We will get into deep into the unit level. So, um, I think this video is long enough. I am saving on this draft for the next lesson. I will show you 
the notation of the algebra notation of the transformation and how to sketch them, whether reflection or translation of the function or stretch the y coordinate and x coordinate uh, to the next video. So um, I hope you enjoyed this video and thank you for watching. Bye for now. Stay tuned for our next video, which is um, continue with this lesson. I will show you how to sketch the strap based on the reflection or translation. I hope you enjoy. Thanks for watching and bye for now.